There's a feature in Reaper that I love, and I know a lot of other people love using it too. It's super, super helpful for helping us make sounds that we otherwise wouldn't think of doing, and it helps us kind of do that automatically. And that feature, as simple as it might sound, is the playback rate feature. Using just one little knob in the bottom right-hand side of your screen, you can really mess up and play with sounds in a way that might be unexpected and give you some super, super cool results. And before you write it off as, oh, it's just slowing down or speeding up the sound, let me show you some examples because it helps me get a lot of that PlayStation 1 era anime sort of sound really, really quickly. So the first thing I want to mention is that if you're not seeing this play right knob in the bottom right, all you need to do is kind of click in this gray area, right click in this kind of gray area near the transport controls. And all you need to do is just make sure show play rate control is highlighted. So you want to make sure that's clicked and then you'll see this little guy pop up, this happy little knob. All right. so. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna assemble a sound. I'm just gonna use some library sound effects, nothing too crazy, and basically I'm gonna show you how cool this knob can make things sound. And then I'm also gonna show you a way to kind of capture these slowed down or sped up sound effects because that's kind of a pain in the butt to capture the output of those play rate affected sounds. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna make a bunch of tracks here, nothing too crazy. And I'm just gonna start layering stuff. I actually have a library that I've been using a lot lately that I really like. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Called Forgotten Eons. So it's just this library that I really, really like from PM SFX and they're great. So they're just some really cool kind of sci-fi E layers. And I've noticed that when I take something like this, and it doesn't have to be these sounds specifically, but if I take something like these sort of sci-fi-y sorts of sounds, and I'll just kind of play a couple for you, it tends to sound really kind of PlayStation 1 anime era sort of effect when I slow it down. So I'm just going to throw some stuff on here and we'll kind of see where we end up. We'll just make some sort of generic sort of sci-fi effect. So let's take a look. Cool. So I'll take that one. I'll take that kind of beep here. Make that our first one. And actually, let me move this up here. And let's take a look here. They have some cool impacts and weapons and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Very cool. So very stylistic, very kind of over the top in a way, in a really kind of old school way, which I like. Great. Sure. Take that. I'm going to turn all these down so that when I play them back, they're not going to be ear piercingly loud. Cool. So I just have these three layers. Sounds neat already, but what I'm going to do now is I am going to start playing with these. I'm going to add some effects first, just to make things simple. So let's take a listen to each of these. Cool. So I got that one. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just add some reverb to each of them. So I'll add some reverb to this first one. And I like Fab Filter Pro R, which is a which is a nice one. Let me just kind of turn this down. Let's take a listen. Actually, let's make that even further. Beautiful. So nice reverb. Great. And just for the sake of time, I will do the no good thing and just copy it to everything instead of using an aux track, but basically I'm going to affect the reverb of each of these individually, so they are a little bit different from one another. So let's listen to that second one. Yeah, a little more subtle on that second one, considering it rings for so long. And I like the third one as it is, but I'm going to add a little more into the mix and go even further with it. Great. Cool. So let's listen to it all together. It'll sound kind of mushy, but that's okay. Great, cool. Kind of stylish, sci-fi-y, otherworldly sort of effect. Now, the reason I want to show you this playback rate knob is that one way we can kind of get a slowed down effect is of course you can take these sounds and you can time stretch them. And it'll kind of give you that sort of effect. 
But the problem is, is that depending on the time stretching algorithm you're using, the effect will be a little bit different. So if I double click one of these sounds and you can see the take pitch shift time stretch mode and you can choose, you know, what it is for that individual file. Some of these sound really cool stretched, some of them sound a little weird, and they all sound a little bit different from one another, but I do really like the way that the play rate knob sounds. I just like the way it stretches things out. And also making it so that it's just one knob is just easier. I don't have to adjust the algorithm for each of these individually, or I don't need to kind of change my project default when I might want something else for some different sounds. Sometimes I just want to slow things down or speed things up and just see how it sounds. So this is a nice, simple way to go about doing that. So here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to basically take this knob, I'm going to turn this all the way down. And other than that, you can also right click it and choose increments. You can turn it down. You can choose the range of the fader and the range of the knob, all sorts of good stuff. But basically, I'm just going to turn it all the way down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play. Let me actually turn this down before I do that, because it might be a little crazy. It might be a little shrill. So heads up if you're using headphones. So automatically pretty cool and pretty stylish. So I'm just going to bring it back to 1.0, bring the playback rate to normal. And I'll hit play again. Cool. Yeah, that's a perfectly fine sound, but I'm just going to take this knob, crank it all the way down and hear it again. Pretty cool. Sounds very stylish right away. Might not be the thing that we always want to do, but for stylistic sound effects, it's a good way to go. But here's the thing, the problem with using this sort of approach, and I've heard this from a lot of people who want to do this sort of thing, is that they end up kind of making this cool sound, They're like, ah, oh, that's so cool, I love this slowed down effect, but getting it outputted is kind of a pain in the butt. So you can't just play around with this knob and expect perfect results every time. You might need to bounce it out and then listen to it and then adjust it from there. But there's an easier way to do this than just bouncing it out or setting up a separate track to record the output or anything like that, there's a much, much better way. So one thing I want to mention is that in an earlier video, I mentioned a plugin that I really, really, really love called Global Sampler. And Global Sampler is effectively a plugin that allows you to constantly record in the background. It's also known, the newer version is called Rolling Sampler. So it's either Global Sampler or Rolling Sampler, depending on which version you have. But if I load up the Rolling Sampler in this case, you'll see that it basically creates a always recording sort of background process based on that track. So if I put it on the master track, for example, it'll always record things that are coming out of the master track. So for example, if I just hit play, you'll see that it just recorded that sound in the background. I didn't have to hit record or anything like that. It's just always recording in the background. And now what I can do is I can just click that, highlight it, drag it, and there we go. There's our sound without needing to bounce manually and drag it back in or anything like that. Much, much, much faster and much simpler when we're experimenting like this. But something I want to show you. So basically, I have this rolling sampler, as it's called, on this master track. I'm going to just take this play rate knob and crank it all the way down. So we just recorded that sound there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that sound I'm going to drag it up here. And now I'm going to set the play rate back to one. So I basically turned the play rate down, hit play, took that thing that the rolling sampler recorded and dragged it back into my project. And now we basically have the output, the thing that we just created, that slower version, but much, much easier than needing to bounce it out or making another track to capture it individually. It makes it much, much, much smoother to kind of play around, experiment, and create variations. You can play around with this knob as it's playing back, for example, and still record it in the background. So you can make some really crazy weird effects by just playing with that knob and capturing it in the background. That makes it a lot easier. Now, something I want to mention, and this is something that's been brought up before, and it's something worth talking about because for those of you who are a little more intermediate to advanced, this might be a better use of the rolling sampler for this sort of thing or anything that you're creating. So you notice that I put on the master track, which is 
all well and good. But something that I recommend if you want to start using this process, and I recommend you do because it's pretty essential and very useful for experimentation, is actually putting that rolling sampler or global sampler, depending on the version you have, onto what's called your monitoring effects. So basically, if I go to View in Reaper and to the monitoring effects, Basically, you'll see that I have a rolling sampler here already, actually, so let me just remove that. You'll basically see a window like this. And basically what the monitoring effects are, are basically effects that aren't actually living in your project per se. They're not affecting the sound that's actually in your DAW. They're just effects that are affecting the sound that you're hearing. So for example, if I add a distortion here, it's not going to actually distort the sounds when I bounce them. It's just going to distort the sounds when I'm listening to them. So what I like to do is actually I add a monitoring rolling sampler effect. And basically, this will be recording in the background all the time. And the thing that's really cool about monitoring effects is that this will automatically just be there in the background for every single project you create by default from now on. So you don't have to manually remember, oh, yeah, let me put that on the master track or anything like that. Anything you put on the monitoring effects by default will just be there all the time, ready to go. So as soon as you put this in here in your monitoring effects section of Reaper, it'll just be there. It'll be in every project you create from now on, and you'll always have a way to background record everything that you're creating. And it makes things like using this playback rate and playing with it a lot easier. So give this a shot. Even though it's simple, playing around with this playback rate can make some really, really cool sound effects. And using something like the rolling sampler or the global sampler makes things so much easier and allows you to play with that playback rate knob, export, and just play around and have a really good time. So as simple as a tip that was, I hope it helps you generate a lot of really cool sound effects. Sometimes the simplest tools are the things that we need to reach for and help us make a lot of really, really great sound effects that we wouldn't really be able to generate on our own without something like this helping us. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Go pet a dog.